All right, so I'm a marketer. I'm not so technical, and I just thought I would give the non-technical, more marketers, you know, internet marketers, some ideas of why they should consider using static, specifically WP2 static for hosting their sites, especially small sites. Of course, we could do big sites. Uh, a lot of people might resist that, but today I just quickly want to give you my way of using it as a non-technical, middle technical, more marketer person. So the first I, I would suggest making a spreadsheet. Of course, I use Google Sheets. You can use Excel or you can do any kind of strategy, but I would still document it. There will be some added complexity, but I still believe even in marketing or any kind of any kind of market work you do, you should keep track, not just rely on, you know, the uh, the hosting company to keep track of your sites. I think a lot of people are just cowboy coding, just com putting their WordPress directly on state on live. They don't have any staging, any backups. I suggest to make some kind of a sheet. I could give this for free if you'd like uh, to download on the on the notes. Um, just list your URL. I have a zero or one if it's a subdomain. It doesn't count as a domain, just so I can count how many actual domains I have. Uh, and then a www is a one. Uh, the registrar where it's registered. Um, I have my own <laughs> one here. Uh, and then the host. So where you're actually hosting it, what CMS is being used. So this is where I'm tracking if it's um, static or not. And uh, and then the development server or wherever it's being um, hosted uh, on WordPress. You know, I could maybe say WP Dev uh, and Notes other things of when it's been checked, things like that. So I would strongly recommend doing this, especially if you're gonna to start to have development servers, staging servers, and actual production servers, which I do highly recommend. So let me just give you an example of a mini site. I have to blur this out, unfortunately, because I just don't want to show my whole, I think marketers can understand, don't want to show your whole domain list. So first thing I would suggest is converting your site to uh, staging. You know, I know some developers like Leon and the WP2 static team says to uh, have it on local, but what I do is I I make I have it on a staging. I call it staging. Basically, it's just on any server where I can host my WordPress. So it's in no SSL. It's password protected. You will let me just show. It's already saved on this one. Let me go into. Uh, so notice it's uh, notice this to log in. I'm gonna need to put in a uh, username and password at the root level. This means it's not indexed by Google. It you know bots can't find it. Uh, humans can't access it unless they're in the team or they somehow got the username and password. Of course, do not give this to people, but uh, that would be what I would suggest. So I'm already saved here. So of course, this is where my WordPress is. No SSL in a hidden subdomain, not indexed by Google, not able to be accessed by anyone. This is where I have uh, my my site. So we're talking today, I actually do multi-sites. You could do this for each individual WordPress, but I just like to have all my sites in one WordPress backend. And we're talking about my book. So this is a book site. Honestly, before WP2 Static, I was afraid to make a separate WordPress site or a separate site for my book because I was afraid I wouldn't have the time to always update the plugins, always update the uh, the sites and pay for the hosting. So now this is hosted, to all I have to do is pay for the domain. Uh, the, the hosting is currently free and uh, it's I know it's a little bit ugly. I, I'm having a friend... Uh, Grace help update the design, but that can be done still on a WordPress. So I give somebody access to update the site. The uh, site is updated on this WordPress. So, you know, um, this you would just basically do this the same as if you were working on uh, working on WordPress. So this is the posts. This is the pages. So basically all is done here when I want my designer or like Grace is working on redesigning a page, making it a little bit prettier. She would do it the exact same way, but it's just in this hidden subdomain or hidden domain. You you'd want it to be as separate as possible from your uh, your real domain. 
and then you would just make the changes. So like, you know, I use a editor, page builder, you know, it works. People, a lot of people use Elementor or whatever. You can do it the exact same way. I should update this picture, <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is, this is, uh, this is how it's done. And notice it's on a subdomain here on this hidden site that cannot be indexed by Google for do you, know, you don't want duplicate content you don't want people to try to find it and hack your site uh, etc so you don't really have to worry so much about updating it so let me just show you now how I maintain it so I make updates to this sometimes and sometimes I don't push it to production right now I'm still doing it manually so this is WP2 static. This is how when I'm ready to push it to production. This is when I'm ready to share it with the world. I I have it as zip archive. You could also have it go directly to say Netlify, which is what I'm going to talk about today, or Amazon S3 or others. Offline storage, I don't check. That's if you want to really like run this like without internet, maybe to show somebody at a coffee shop, maybe you're doing web design for a for a client as a as an agency. And then your URL. So this is the URL that it will create. By this not being checked, this will create it with this URL. So you got to, especially for marketing, you know, a lot of internet marketers, you don't, www.https, this is all important. Some of my sites, I do have www. It's just the way it got indexed in Google five, ten years ago when I made it. Um, been making websites for a while. Crawling. Notice this is where I have to put my, uh, that password I mentioned going over here this password also is going to be used for wp2 static because it also needs when it crawls the site it's going to get this prompt for password so you need to put that same password here crawl increment i i it's set to one i put it to maximum it depends on your server you know this is being built for anybody with any kind of crappy shared hosting i i get away with maximum Processing, I don't change anything, but you could actually change URLs. I should use this to uh, get rid of these long WP URLs. But basically, I start the site at, and it starts to start it. And then it will run. Normally, while it's running, I go into Netlify. I have bookmarked my team. So my team is here. And then I have all these different sites. And then I just basically look, because I have so many now, I just look for the site. Okay, so it's done. Um, some people on my team have helped do this from Netlify, I mean from GitHub, but I'm doing this manually. So I go back here, it's done. So I download it as zip, save it to my desktop. It's this, you know, it's about this. So this is the whole site now in zip format. So um, you could, of course, unzip it and manually upload it to any server anywhere. But the way it works, uh, I guess many, but I'm using Netlify is dragging and dropping it as a zip. And then what it will do is it will start, see it says, it says GitHub, but I'm not using GitHub anymore for this. Uh, like I said, I'm the marketer. There's also, of course, automatic connections, and with upgrades and future versions, we'll, we'll have it even more smooth where we just make one blog post update. It will just update there. So we have to wait. See, now it's showing it. It's uploading, but it's still not published. So it will automatically publish. Uh, we just need to wait to uh, get rid of the download. Don't need it. Basically, just waiting for it to finish uploading and processing. This is what basically is taking the zip file, unzipping it, or first uploading it to their server, unzipping it, and then putting it into their uh, putting it into their. There we go. So it's published. So now it's basically the most up to date one. There was this is. It'll look the same because I haven't made any huge changes to it. But, you know, I think growing in Amazon. Yeah, see, I didn't have uh, that latest blog post, if you noticed. I just uh, 
this is the one I just had done. More kind words from a... Cr See, that was the uh, last one. There was two blog posts that I've published since. Of course, this is a very this is a mini site, right? This is gonna be a book site. I'm in launch phase. I'm just trying to show off a little bit. I probably won't be updating this too much in the future. So I'm so happy that uh, I have it on static with um, with this uh, system, so that I don't need to ever worry about this site. You know, I I'm a Kindle writer. I have a few other books. I can make a dedicated book site. You know, as an internet marketer, I could you know have lots and lots of domains and it's all being uh, hosted on for free on uh, Netlify. I think there's other solutions too and I, I can sleep well at night knowing that I don't need to worry about updating the plugins, updating the theme, getting an email alert that this is not updated, this is not updated. I, I think people know, especially if you're managing 10, 20, 50, I'm up to 87 domains, you know, that gets me a lot of work or a lot of money whether you're using an expensive hosting company to do it for you or you're doing it with your own team or yourself, it gets overwhelming and, and or expensive. So I hope this makes sense. Um, like I'll have the site cleaned up better. I, you know, you can still give people access to your, your uh, staging or, you know, your development server uh, to fix things. And then when they're done, you or maybe can even automatically be done or, or um, pushed through automatic connections to your production which would be the static so again this is not WP there is no WP admin here see I could make a better 404 page but basically uh, this is all static so it loads fast it gets indexed the URLs are all the same um, I hope this makes sense I can make more videos if this helped but uh, that's how I use this as a, a marketer and a normal non-technical person